So for those of you who do not keep up on Twitter and have not checked out any of my least recent live streams, um, yeah, the reason why, well, one of the main reasons why I haven't really posted much this year is because I have an actual job out of the house. I'm not just working from home anymore. I'm working here. As you can see, this is Bonita Springs Toys and Games, and I am a toy store manager. The, yeah, 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 the YouTube toy guy ended up working at a toy store after Toys R Us closed down. I did this the hard way. So I thought, as long as I have a toy store available to me, why not just start filming a few things in the toy store? It seems pretty obvious to me. And one of the most obvious things to do is to just tell stories about working in a toy shop, because, you know, I dreamed of this growing up. I never knew what it was actually going to be like, so I figured maybe a few of my experiences might educate those who might think this is a dream job. It kind of is, but also, there's a lot of twists and turns and a lot of unexpected stuff, and I get some interesting stories out of it. So, I want to give you a little bit of the toy store life. And we're going to start with, as you can probably tell by the title of this video, a really, really odd experience I never would have expected. I have customers coming in from out of state all the time. I have recent people who've moved in and they're just looking for whatever geek or toy hot spot they can find. I mean, and that's the interesting thing. You see a lot of people who just, they're in the area or, the, you know, they're in, you know, they're on vacation or, or they're visiting relatives or whatever. But they're geeks. They want to visit whatever toy shop is in the area, whatever comic book store they can find, because every single one is so different from each other. You never know what you're going to find. So if you're out and about, and if you're on the move and touring around, it's always worth it to hit up those places because you can find some really cool and exciting things. So in one of these particular cases, uh, we had s someone came into the shop one day, and this guy was definitely an out of towner. Uh, uh, he he still had like he said a little bit more tan than I typically see around here. Even for Florida, you'd think I would see a lot of tans. Not not in this area, but this guy was still slightly still slightly gold. And uh, when we're t we're talking, he tells me he just moved here from California. And when he tells me California, I'm like, okay, this explains the look. He does have that California tan to him. Uh, and he does have that kind of, he has kind of an actor vibe because, like, if you look at his hair, his hair is all still, like, bright blonde, but he's balding here, like, in a, in this. So he's got that island of hair on the top, and he's, like, pulled that out and combed it around to cover it up everywhere where the, where the hair doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Hollywood. He, he looks Hollywood. He, he looks like he's been through the ringer in Hollywood, is what he looks like. And he's eyeballing a few certain things. He's eyeballing things like the Power Rangers section. And, you know, and we get to talking. Like, and you just always end up talking to the customers who come in, especially the more interesting ones. Turns out he was a stuntman in Los Angeles. And... His big claim to fame, at least the show he worked on the most, VR Troopers. I, okay. Never would have called that. Uh, yeah, so he was the stuntman who was in the JD suit for most of the American footage. He also he played a couple villains of the week in American footage, a couple, you know, scugs, that kind of thing. He was a go-to guy for just shooting new live-action footage, which is super cool. Like, here I am, Toku Geek. You know, I'm the one who's keeping, like, Super Sentai toys, like, right here at my workstation. That's another story. And I've got Power Rangers right over here, and, like, I'm, like, I'm geeking out over this. Like, I'm freaking out. Like, because the thing is, like, okay, yeah, it's not, like, the actors who played the characters, but 
and it's not the people in the Japanese stock footage suits, of course, but I have such respect for suit actors, for tokusatsu in general, because it's a lot of work to be able to put on a choreographed fight in those like full design costumes and armor and the helmets that you can barely see out of. And like this is the first time I've been able to ask somebody, what is it like to work in the helmet? Because I've seen like footage of what it looks like inside there and it looks awful. And he's like, yeah, yeah, like you barely see anything. It's like a struggle to actually, you know, find your points and hit your moves. So I have tremendous respect for them. So now there's one right in front of me. And you know, he, he's the type, you can tell he's the type that loves to tell his stories and the things I, I love to hear about his stories. So, like, just whatever he wants to tell me, I'm, I'm down for it. He starts telling me about, you know, just generals, because he's worked on a few cool things. He was on, he was a, a Cardassian on Deep Space Nine, where, like, he was real proud because, like, he looked so good in the makeup that when they did the commercials for the final episodes... Like, they always used the take that he was visible in. And I've gone back to look at that in the actual episode. He's in it for, like, two seconds. And the funny part about that is, is that he was telling me that they did the makeup in the morning. You know, did, you know, got everybody ready to film. But scenes before them just kept taking longer, more resets, more reshoots, longer and longer and longer and longer. He's backstage shooting ba uh, paper ball, basketball with uh with michael dorn just both in full costume just like lobbing paper balls into a trash can just waiting for their scenes to come up and they, they he tell me he's how they he get like uh something that was like you know like a 500 hundred dollar gig ended up being like a ten thousand dollar spot because they get into uh overtime they get into like the time period they're there for and then overtime, and then what's called golden time, which I assume is like super overtime. Um, and so they just, like, basically they got paid for sitting there to suffer in the makeup. And he's in the, he's in the shot for like five seconds. Amusing weird things like that. You know, and, and, and not always the other things. Like, he was telling me, because he was a stuntman, generally, he'd tell me about the stunt work he did, and it's cool stuff, you know, how to, you know, the, the like, the scariest falls he's taken, you know, like, the biggest stunts he's done. He was telling me about the VR Trooper stage show that, uh, that came up. Um, because they were doing, like, live, like, touring stage show thing, just like, uh, just like, like, because Power Rangers were doing that back in the day. Kind of like Japan always does. You don't see it in America anymore. Even pre-pandemic, you didn't see it in America because it just didn't do as well. But they did it for VR Troopers back in the height of Power Ranger popularity. And he was just telling me this story that the guys that were working the crew on this one show would not secure the pads on the floor correctly. You're supposed to... Like, put the pads together and then, like, duct tape them down together crosswise so there's no visible seams that are going to come apart. That way, you know, you don't create a hazard when all your actors are rolling around and tumbling. Uh, one, of the, one of the guys, like, he pointed it out, do, you know, seal up this spot. You know, seal up. He told them twice, and they didn't do it, and... The actor for Ryan Steele, like not the costume actor, like the actual guy, uh, ripped his knee because his foot got caught in it during a scene, and he could, and he had to go to the hospital, and chewed the get chewed the crew out for it. He was so angry, so told him again, tape it down, secure it properly. Nope, he gets to his scene. He's in the full JD armor. He's rolling around, he's fall, he's doing his stunts, and he's coming down off of one, and he can see it. As he's coming down, he can see that it hasn't been secured. Foot catches, knee rips, he ends up in the hospital bed right next to Ryan. Hollywood! For all those who thought it'd be really cool to be a stuntman, or a tokusatsu actor in suit, no, hazardous work dangerous work, and if you're working with idiots, even more so. But it was just story after story like that, just all the things he's done and seen, you know, he's, you know, and 
I'm waiting for him again because he has talked about like maybe we get the VR Trooper guys out here and I don't know how well that would do but I would love to do that just for the sake of doing it um, I, he was talking about all the toys that he collected over the years and just like stockpiled like original Ninja Turtles and Kenner Batman and like stuff I grew up on I'm like I want that I want that I want that I want that in the store I want that in this store so I'm waiting, <clears throat> I'm waiting for him to get to, to show up again and really I just want to hear more of the stories because I do find it fascinating and it is obvious that he really does like telling his stories. But that is for another day. And hopefully I will have more stories about uh, about him at that point. Um, yeah. So that's all I got for this one for now. Uh, hope you enjoy the Toy Store life. And hopefully I will be back with you soon sharing another little tidbit I have developed from working at what was my childhood dream job and is now my reality. So... I'll see you next time.